please explain to me, in the love and honor of all that is good right in this world, how something that looks this awesome in its alt mode could really turn out to be such a terrible, horrible, shameful waste of plastic. And unfortunately, she is. And we're going to take a look at her. This is the Transformers Prime Deluxe Class <sighs> Arachnid, and she's going to be the focus of the latest Gotba True Review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As always, I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, aka Gapa. Please check out Machinery of Men, the Everything Factor. Have a look at Universal Collision. Spend some time on the channel. See what it is that might tickle your fancy. Uh, check me out everywhere, and we're going to jump right into this lady, if you could call her that, with her paint apps. Um, she looks kind of sleek in this mode. I will admit, I like the black chopper, even though the purple blades sort of throw me for a little bit of a loop. Uh, even though they do rotate really nice and really free. Um, but in robot mode, she's missing some gold apps. The purple could have been adjusted slightly on her. I, I think that the rotor blades up here should have had more black on them. There's uh, no mistaking who it is, but there are things missing. As such, I'm going to give her paint apps about a 7. It's all right. It's all right, but that's all that it is. It's all right. Um, normally, I would do pose, build, play, build, and next, but I'm not going to because this is the way she came in package. So this is the way I'm starting her, which means our next measure now will be transformation. And I'm going to tell you, the transformation is... How can I put it? It's simple, um, but I feel like even though you are finished it, there seems like there should be more to do. She's so awful. She's awful. You know, a while ago, I was lucky enough to get the Generations RC, and I love that mold. I, I, I think it's great that we got a Chromia, though I tend to use a Transformers Prime RC as my incarnation of that character. I know, I know, I should probably get a real Chromia, right? I even think it's cool that we got Victorian and the Torchbearers or the Rust Renegades, whatever name you, you prefer. But we had a lot of Autobot Fembots. Why a robot identifies as a gender I'll never know, even though we've gotten a couple of explanations. Whatever. On the Decepticon side of things, I thought that I would try and add to those ranks. So I, I bought a Black Arachnia and from the animated line. I looked at her full in episode 29 a long time ago. Um, she's okay-ish, kinda, sorta. Uh, and I wasn't satisfied because she was still way outnumbered by the Autobot side of things. And now we have the Takarotomi Megatronia. Um, and I, I think that looks really cool. I don't, I don't know if I would pay a premium price for a bunch of repaints and an insignia change from Autobot to Decepticon, but hey, that's just me. She does look cool. I will give that. Um, so since all I had was Black Arachnia, I thought, hey, who better to add than somebody who had a presence and she was a threat, both in in terms of, you know, the cerebral, like she she was always full of mind games, and physically. Arachnid was imposing, and she, you knew that, that she was going to have a serious impact. And I hoped that we were going to get a serious toy instead of this joke. Uh, so where do we begin with the transformation? Remember, we are currently at a 7 for paint apps. Well, we begin by bringing up that back piece. And we can even split that. So, we have that up, we have that split. You can do the same with the lower. Basically, now you have her legs. Um, all right, I'm gonna just take this back a little bit for 
the height here. Um, this is, you know, this is kind of where we're to with her. Next, you take this nose cone. Oh, by the way, before I go any further, I want to point this out. She has a translucent purple cockpit section. And to her credit, this section does, if I can get it, does open. And inside there's even a cockpit seat, but no pilot. Why sculpt the seat if you're not going to sculpt the pilot? Normally that wouldn't bother me, but it does, and I'll explain why a little bit later. So we close that up again. We have the back, you know, pretty much done, really. So what do we do next? Well, we take the nose cone and we flip it all the way back. So now it's just flipped back over the cockpit section. And then we come to her shoulders. That's going to be the next thing. And you pull them out. And there's a little purple hinge inside up on the shoulder. And you've got to exert a little bit of force. It's tight. And though I haven't had it happen yet, I feel like I'm going to potentially break it because it's fairly thin. So we come up here. We take these whole arm sections. We bring them out. The whole arm section bring it out and at this point we can pull down on the little purple uh, hinges that are in there. I'll say this about those purple hinges. You can barely see them now I'm guessing. It's because they don't come out very far from the body. So we come here and we pull it down and now you can see the purple hinge in there. I hope. This one we Pull down from the body. This is where we're to so far. This is where we're to so far. Her head is down in her body and her arms are still uh, squat together. And here's why I say squat together. Bringing an arm out. Here's what you have. Her hand is flipped up in here. So we'll take her hand we will flip it out. Now you probably see a purple hinge kind of in here. That little purple section just goes extended out as much as we can and that's her arm. That's it. And we do the same on the other side. We flip out her hand and we extend that. And that's what we get for arms. This is an arm. Let me take off her blaster. This is what we get for an arm. Look at that. That's shameful. And there's even a big hole in her hand right there. There's a big hole, like five millimeter hole in her hand. Why? So you can take this terrible looking thing, which I guess is supposed to be her blaster, and put it in there. There you go. That's how she holds her weapon. I would never do that. It looks idiotic is the only word I can think of. And we take that out. Personally, I would leave it in the hole on her arm up right here, just where it was. The hands are completely, completely straight and look moronic. You know, I, I hate to say it, but they look horrible. How do we get the head up? Well, we take this entire canopy section that got the cockpit and the rotors on it. And we should be able to. I was trying to pull it down. We pull it up. My mistake. We take this and turn it. We take this rotor and turn it and the third rotor and turn it. And in the end, if she'll do it, which is highly questionable. And in the end, we have Air Rachnid. Now, how imposing does that look? To stand up, she has to be bent forward at least that far. And if you're wondering just how far that is, for her to stand up, she is bent forward at least that far. That's terrible. These 
three rotor pieces, they swivel all around. A lot of times, what I'll do is, since we have these two black pieces here, I'll take one down and put it between there and close those up just to try and keep the rotor pieces somewhat stationary. And the transformation, it's not hard, but I feel like there's more that should be done with the arms. The legs should have panels that move, and it's like it's undone. It's like it's not finished. Kids can do it easy, sure they can. But what the helicopter turns into really isn't worth turning into. I'm gonna give the transformation, I'll give it about a six, I guess. About a six, no, I gotta give it about a five because it doesn't feel finished. We have a five, we have about a seven. This is getting about a six or so, so far, I guess. Thereabouts, roughly. Um, articulation, well, the head, can go a little bit left and a little bit right, but not much, because do you remember that seat that was in the cockpit section that I mentioned earlier? You know, this seat? Well, it's on and it's molded into the back of her head, which means she can only move her head as much as the cockpit will allow her to move it. She can't really look up, though, to her credit, she can look down. So I guess that's something. These pieces can bend way back and bend forward, um, but that's it. I guess they're supposed to be her arachnid legs. The arms, they can go up and down uh, across her body. You kind of got a bit of a nice bit of motion actually across her body, which is cool. If we take this piece off, this is how her elbow bends. It's not quite 90 degrees. Uh, if you use the other hinge, I guess you can get it up to 90 degrees. But is this really an arm worth using? Uh, the hand, you know, that, that, can, that can say hi. Uh, it's, there's no swivel because the arm is just one panel. Um, so there's no swivel. In terms of elbow or in terms of outward movement, that's all you're getting and even that's banging her in the head. And honestly, maybe she should hit herself with her shoulder. She's terrible. There is no waist. Not that it would really help things. The legs can go all the way back to that and all the way forward to that. If you move it on the side, you can get up to here, but I mean, you can see the angle that her foot's on now. It can, they can, you know, do splits out to there, right? So yeah, isn't that impressive? Uh, the knee bends, but of course, since you can't really get the foot forward, the knee bend is highly useless. There is absolutely no articulation at the feet where she really, really could have used it because look how small those feet are. are her stability is terrible. If you just try to stand her up straight, here's what's gonna happen. Because she can't stand up straight. Because she's awful. Um, with that alt mode, this should have been so good. I, I, I feel like, let's see if I can even stand her up. With that alt mode, she should have been fantastic. I feel like panels on the thighs should have moved, possibly. The arms are unforgivable. You want to know how to do, you know, a, a I guess a female-inspired robot, a female-inspired transformer? Here you go. This is the uh, Generations RC. Fantastic representation of the character. I looked at her in full in episode 76, and I don't care which version of this you have, she's great. They scale well. But this is infinitely, double infinity, triple infinity better than this. Uh, articulation, because she either has next to none or what she has is largely useless, I'm giving that a minus, oh, a minus 20. Which means an overall score. We have a minus 20 for articulation. We had about a six, a five or a six before. She's about a minus 14. She's terrible. When I saw uh, the helicopter, I bought into it. 
And when I had heard people say, she's not that good, honestly, I figured, hey, come on, she can't be that bad. Yeah, she really is. People are not um, saying things about her that aren't true. I don't know how this was ever produced. I don't know how it ever got out on the shelves. It was, and to this day still is, absolutely wretched. Anyway, folks, let me know what you think about this Transformer. Mm -hmm. yeah. As always, I appreciate you stopping by, giving me some of your time, especially for looking at something this terrible. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together for another visit right here inside the videos.